أهلاً بكم أبنائي وبناتي طلاب الصف الخامس ابتدائي. Today إن شاء الله we are going to continue our journey in the second concept. But I need to make a revision on this concept. Revision on concept one two, but a quick revision. Let's start with land use energy from sunlight. Plants need energy, which comes from sunlight. Okay, what about this energy? This energy, yeah, um, takes from sunlight and the plant to do a process. This process is called what? It's called photosynthesis process. Okay. After that, all the following are basic needs to make the plant food. Except what? Which one? not a basic need for the plant. Water is a basic need, air basic need, yeah, sunlight basic need, but rocks not a basic need. Both plant and animal need what to survive? Plant and animal need air to survive, but plant need carbon dioxide, uh, soil not a basic need, Shelter also not a basic need. So the correct choice is air. And also if there is water in the question, the water will be correct. The next one. Any food chain. Start with any food chain, my dear students, start with producer. Which one is producer here? Yeah, that's the Plant. Green plant can make their own food by photosynthesis process. Plant takes what from air to make its food. Plant take, my dear students, from air carbon dioxide gas. Glucose sugar is transported from leaf to other part of the plant from the leaf so it's a tube which transfer or the vessel which transfer the food from the leaf to all part of the plant which is my dear student the flowing in plant sleep light energy converted into what in the leaf the light it change into chemical energy during photosynthesis process. The reproductive part of many plants are called, the reproductive part is the flower. Let's move to another question. We need more energy during, we need more energy during watching TV, or sleeping, or listening to music, or physical exercise. The correct one will be physical exercise. Okay. To get energy, to survive, what happened? Yeah. To get energy, the energy transfers from what? From producer eat decomposers? No. From consumer eat a producer? Yeah, from butterfly, it's a hawk. Of course not. Hawks eat a butterfly. No, yeah, correct answer will be consumer eats a producer. Living organisms which can't make their own food. Can't make their own food. Like what? Animal and the plant, if there is producer or plant in the soil, it will be wrong. So it's consumer and decomposers that can't make their own food. After that, many insects considered, my dear students, the insect eats what eat the producer, so it's a primary consumer. Energy flow directly from, look at the choices, plant to the algae, so the eagle, sorry, plant to the eagle, 
eagle can't eat plant. Earth to the eagle also and not the food of the eagle. Eagle to a snake mm, from the eagle to the snake. How can a snake eat the eagle? Of course not. But the correct one from snake to eagle. Okay, because the eagle what eats a snake. Another one. Plan use energy from what? To make their own food. Plan get the energy from sunlight. All the following can help in seed dispersal. Except wind can help in seed dispersal. Uh, water help in seed dispersal. Soil, human and animal help in seed dispersal. So the wrong one is soil and sunlight. Duck, we are thin, floating plant found on the top of lakes and pond. How do the energy flow uh, and how the living organism use the food? Look at the sentence again. The quick thing. And floating plant. It's a plant found at the top of the pond. How do they get energy? And they use it as a food. It's plant found at the top of the lake. So they use photosynthesis. Simply, any example of plant floating. Whatever, it's a plant. So they use photosynthesis to change the energy or from the light to a chemical energy stored in its body. Here, my dear students, we finished our revision for the concept. But now let's move to the new concept, which is 1.3. In this concept, my dear students, we are going to talk about changes in food web. It changes in the food web. Yeah, that's the third concept in our curriculum. Firstly, we start with a food chain and know what the difference between the food chain and the food web. Food web consists of different interconnected food chain. Okay. Now, let's ask a question. What will happen to the food web? When any organism change? Yeah, what happened? If the producer disappeared, if there is a change in the organisms in the food web, what will happen? If firstly, take example with a producer. If the producer disappeared, what happened? There is no producer. So there is no food. So the consumer will move to another place. Why they move? To search for food or they will die. Okay, that's to the producer. But if the number of one species of organism, like the consumer, increase, if there is more consumer, can the resources of the food enough to them? Of course, no. The resources Mm, will disappear. So there is no food for this organism. So they will die. Again, my dear students, what happens if there is a change in the number of producers or in the number of consumers? If there is no producer, the consumer must move or they will die. But if the consumer increases, what happened? Yeah, the food will disappear or may disappear because the consumer are more. So they will, or the number of them will decrease or finally they will die. So they must move to another ecosystem to find more food. Okay, that's about the ecosystem. If the number of the living organisms increasing it. But what happened? If the human activity affect on this ecosystem, yeah, human activities 
What about the human activities? Human Nigerian students make or do many activities in the environment. Yeah, all of us affect. But if we first talk about the marine habitat or a marine environment, the human affect on it more. Like what? Like overfishing, like water pollution. Overfishing and water pollution are examples of human activities which affect on the marine habitat. Okay, let's see how the human can affect by overfishing. What's meant by overfishing? Overfishing means the human catch many fish from the rivers. Human catch many fish from the sea or the ocean. That's overfishing and this affect on the marine habitat. The human also may cause water pollution. How the human cause water pollution? By throwing any material in the water. So there are many changes may take place in the food web. May be by human activities like overfishing and water pollution in the marine environment. And in this concept, now we can find example for this marine environment. Yeah, like what? Like Palau, what island? And in this island, my Jewish students, it's an island which found in the sea. Yeah, what happened? People, my dear students, in this island protect the marine environment. They must protect them to keep alive. But how they protect them? They protect them by many ways, but like putting rules, like stop throwing the wastes in the ocean. So there are rules to stop throwing any wastes in the ocean. Also, they protect them by what? By control the overfishing, okay? So the living organisms which found in the marine environment, we must protect it from the human activities, like stop throwing waste material, stop overfishing, okay? And if we are going to talk about what happened to not a marine environment, yeah, by the many changes. Like what? What happened if there is gentle rain in the desert? There is gentle rain. So now the ecosystem, not a marine, but it's a desert. If there is gentle rain, it will improve the desert. Why? Because the rainwater will help the plant to make its own food. And the plant here is a producer. Okay. Also, what will happen if there is heavy rain? If there is heavy rain in this desert, it will harm the desert. Why it harm the desert? Because there is flooding, and this flooding will destroy the desert. So that's a natural. It's like a gentle rain or a heavy rain, which affect the same environment which is the desert. This heavy rain will causing flooding and the flooding will destroy the ecosystem. But the gentle rain will improve the desert. Okay. What happens if there is drought? Whatever the type of the environment. Drought, yeah, and the grass will die. There is no water, so the grass will die. So the food web will destroy it. Why? Because the plant will die and all organisms will die. But if we are going to talk about what happens if there are many top predators in the food web, a lot of top predators. So what happened? Remember what we say? If there are many consumers, yeah, there will be no enough food. So the food web will harm it, okay? Because the top predator will eat 
all the organisms. Okay, let's move to another point, which is a very important point. What's meant by the top predator? Top predator eat all the living organisms, can eat all the consumers. Okay, and what's top predator? Can you find it at the beginning of the food chain or at the end? Of course, it must found at the end of the food chain. My dear students, top predator, consumer, found at the top of the food chain. Like what? Like, mm, like lion, like crocodile, and also like the hawk. Okay. Um, let's move to another food web. Yeah, food web in this uh, in a marine environment. What happened in this marine environment? Let's study a food web in a marine environment. Look at this picture. What can you see? Yeah, I can see algae. That's algae. This algae considered a producer in this food web. What happened? This algae can be eaten by the clay. And the clay can be eaten by the sea star. And finally, the shark is. So the shark is what? It's a top predator. And what? The algae. Eaten by what? Yeah, eaten by the sea urchin. And the parrot fish. My dear students, the parrot fish has a teeth. Yeah, it can eat the sea urchin. And finally, the shark can eat it. So it's connected food chain. So it's a food web. Another one, algae, plain. Yeah, and what? And also you can find here what a coral reef and also a butterfly fish feed on the coral reef. And finally, the shark eat them. So my dear students, we can find that. What? At is us. This is a marine food web. Algae produce their own food. Yeah. And the zooplankton and also the clay and the sea ocean feed on the algae. And the sea star feed on the clay. Coral feed on the zooplankton. Butterfly fish, tiger fish feed on coral. Parrot, feed on coral and sea ocean. And finally, the shark feed on the sea star and also the different types of fish. That's called food web because there are many different interconnected food chain and found in the marine what food uh, marine environment. Okay, look at this piece. When the predator feed on a prey, give example to the predator, like the shark, when it feed on butterfly fish, it gain energy. Yeah, so the energy transfers from what? Energy must move from prey to the predator. And the energy, yeah, but what about the total amount of energy? Total amount of energy in the ecosystem is the same, but the energy transfer from living organism to another. And finally, this energy return to the soil. By what? By the effect of the decomposers, because decomposers feed on the dead organism and return energy back to the soil. So, finally we can say that sun is a produce, yeah, sun is the source of energy, or it produces energy, and the plant which is the producer take this energy, okay? The plant take this and make its food by process called photosynthesis process and store this energy in the form of chemical energy. 
So the sunlight, it changes into chemical energy in the body of the plant, okay? And this chemical energy transfers to consumer. And finally, when the consumer dies, it decomposes and changes it into simple substance and the energy will return back to the soil and so on. Okay, that's my dear students, takes place in the food web or in our ecosystem. Okay, but if we are going to talk about a new thing, which is what? If there is increase in the number of salt, or increase in the number of algae, or decrease the number of zooplankton, or the number um, of ants on land, whatever, the living organism. Yeah, that's called a word population change. What? A new term which is called population change. A change means increase or decrease. What's meant by population? Population, my dear students, it's the number of organisms. Again, number of organisms. This number for a specific type of species in an area. So, population is the number of organisms of one type which is living in an area. Okay? So, ecosystem contain different type of population, okay, or different type of species. And these species depend on each other. But if there is increase or decrease in the number of the population, that's called population exchange. Okay, let's give example with population change in an ecosystem. Look at this picture. What can you see? Yeah, that's a seabird. Seabird. This bird, yeah, build their nest on the top of mountain cliff. Okay, the top of the mountain cliff, you can find this uh, seabird. But it feed on a small fish. And this small fish found where? Found in water, which found near this mountain. But what about the type of, of food for this small fish? This small fish feed on microorganisms. These microorganisms float on the surface of the water, of the sea, float, why, or found at the top of this water, because they are producers. Producers, yeah, they can make their own food. And these microorganisms are too small to can be seen by our eye, but they are producers. Remember, in the previous session, we did that producer, living organism, which can make their own food, like plant, like also algae and water. And also there are two small mm, organisms to see with our eye, which is producer and called microorganisms. They can make their food, so they are producers. These microorganisms, my dear students, found only in cold water habitat. Why? Because they need this water to survive. Okay. So that's ecosystem. Have what? Yeah, the seabird feed on what? On a small fish. And this small fish feed on microorganisms which found in wood. If there is any exchange in the ecosystem, like mm, increasing the temperature, microorganisms live in cold water. 
if there is a change in it, if there is a change in the temperature of the water, what happens? My organisms, my dear student, will move to where an area where the water is cooler. So no microorganisms in this uh, world. What happened? The small fish also will move to this microorganism. And what happened to the seabird? Also, they will move to find food source in another habitat because no microorganisms, no small fish, so no food for these seabirds. So that's called population change, okay? If I ask you the factor which may cause problem for many living organisms, yeah, like what? What happened here in this environment? What happened? There is climate change. If the climate change or it become unsuitable, what happened to the population? Will increase or it will decrease. Of course, when the climate become unsuitable, it become firstly unsuitable, they will decrease. But if it's suitable, the population will increase. So if the climate change is suitable, the population of a species increase. But if it is unsuitable, the population of species will decrease. So the organism either die or move to another place. No choice. If they can't move, they will die. Now, my dear students, we finished the, the first part in uh, the third concept. Okay? Let's see you soon, inshallah, in the next session to continue our science curriculum for the first part. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.